Hey folks, Engineer775 doing a bunker, big boy bunker wrap up. Uh, a lot of details. Oh, I caught Abraham on camera. Uh, there he is. There he goes. It's, oh, maybe that was Squatch. Um, anyway, we're uh, we are doing the security side of things right now, making sure we have internet with internet router, video cameras. Real Link is the system we're using. Very has worked. This is the second time we've used it. It's doing really well, and. Um, so we're just getting that hooked up, making sure that the Solark and battery are also hooked up to the internet so you can monitor the system now remotely. Really cool. I can make updates, I can check on it. And, um, and then the ham station is next. We got some plumbing to do with a dehumidifier, fix some plumbing leaks in here. That is priority. And then the generator fuel system this is the ham radio kit uhf and vh uh, high frequency and uhf we uh, it's a pretty cool box that it's in this gator and um we're going to set this up as the ham ham shack radio station here over here we've run the coax underneath the floor system and pulled it through to the gen pod up and out to be able to hook to antennas and so we're going to transition from all that wiring that Abraham's done in here to a little cleanup and then we're going to get the fuel tank in and wire the generator up we still got to do that and fire this baby up got to bring some diesel fuel down here hook up the battery now that we have power and a battery maintainer fuel system we got lots of it's lots of little tasks Get this last 10 percent of this thing last five percent done but it's doing good and we got a clean but we got plumb electrical anyway just wanted to show you some of the details that have to be done um and again you're not seeing all that needs to be done but showing you a lot okay last day here on the big boy the atlas big boy we have again learned a lot this has been a very challenging job but a good job and uh, we are just doing some final cleanup last minute touches and testing come into the generator pod we got some you know, some wet paint here can you smell it uh, the sweet little EPS is running good we finally got uh, everything worked out in terms of the return and supply line on the fuel we just have a 36 gallon fuel tank which on this baby will run over 100 hours, which when charging a lithium battery is a lot of life. So um, we just went small, it allowed us to work on some things. We got ham radio cables coming in here, uh, ethernet cables for cameras. Uh, again, that's the air intake, air exhaust. We have one simple receptacle light switch combination and a battery maintainer. I gotta bring the cord back in. So we got a little battery maintainer in here. We put a thermometer in here just to, we just ran it, just to keep, uh, just to make sure. I think it's good. Um, a lot of people ask, why didn't you put the inverter and battery in here? Um, I kind of like it in the living quarters. It's uh, with the lithium, there's no off-gassing. It's a lot cleaner. And just leave the generator, the diesel generator, in the generator pod. A lot more room to work, maintain, and bring in fuel. It's just not the best environment for an inverter. So, um, but they communicate well. We've got the uh, power running over to the inverter underneath this shelter over to it. And we've been charging, running loads and all of that. So this is how we left it. We couldn't find a fuel tank. I know it's kind of a goofy size, but it, it actually makes it easy. It's sticking out, it's easy to fill. Uh, basically a manual operation. Even though we have two wire start capability, I told the customer I am not a fan of the two wire star unless you know that you have enough air coming in here temperatures are good um, I just just key start it it's gonna it's not gonna be used much so um, there's no sense in taking a risk of overheating it because somebody didn't lock one of these doors you have to have the doors closed in order to get air in here and a lot of people typically don't understand that so I don't want to mess with it but that door right there needs to be closed or else you can't get the overblast valve, the air to come into the gen pod to keep this thing running and to keep it cool. 
so I don't want to overheat it. It's such a sweet machine. So um, anyway, just a last minute clean out. Again, I'm in the mud room. Can't see much. You'll hear the air change drastically when I open that up. So the blast valve here opens when this is pressurized. When that door is closed, then I get air from my generator, but it takes a while. So if the blower's off for any reason, it's gonna get super hot in there. And I don't want it to be super hot in there. So anyway, we added a few things, added a shut off valve, made it easy to shut off the, the water. Got a, a master shut off here, two places, outside the shelter and inside. Filter, we had to fix a lot of, a lot of leaks. And the grinder pump we've tested several times. Good, everything's good. Even added a bidet. Just take that toilet paper. We add a bidet to your toilet and we're, it's a, a luxe bidet. So, take that. Hope he's done making noise in here. Um, well, he's got this hatch open. I will show you. I don't know if you can see it or not. I've already shown you this, but that A.O. Smith... Real sweet, little on-demand, little two and a half gallon water heaters doing fantastic on the Solark. Got the ham radio station turned on here. He's gonna probably, he's gonna, I just put things in here the way I thought he'd like them, but he's probably gonna move it around. Um, left him a little surprise. You gotta start the shelter library with a Practical Preppers book, of course. And I got him a, the Survival Medicine Handbook by Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy. Great book. Starting his shelter library. Manuals for everything. We've got this plumbed in. It's doing well. Cameras are good. And uh, turn up and a few things. Man, he's noisy. <laughs> what happened? It's a little ripped up. How? Nothing out of here. Oh. Oh, I see. Sweet. Okay, and we just put two 55-gallon drums. They fit completely in the floor section of the big boy and some pumps. Again, this is backup. That will be backup water. And we have the Aquamira solution two-part to treat those, and they'll, they'll be good and potable for five-plus years and have a manual way to get the water out of there. You could, there's a booster pump in the system. We could plumb something in if we want to get creative, but for today, that's it. This is a manual operation. All right, we've got to get out of here. I think we're done. We've tested, retested, protested. And we're doing great with that. Fortress, we tested the generator a little while ago. Doing awesome. And we used about 10 kilowatts today, so that's pretty cool. I got these babies on timers. I'm gonna go back to the timer. It's past when I want it. Again, uh, timers are great to, to put in your systems if you're on solar, so that you just run some of the loads, heavy loads. Loads that don't need to run all day long uh, can be available to run during solar hours. And uh, that is, what that load is going to be so i think we're done i think we're done we might be back for some fine tuning but other than that i think we're in good shape and we also put the dehumidifier on a timer just going to run it uh, 10 to 2 during the day let that come on but um, ham radio station's ready to go just needs a few more connectors for his antennas and he'll be uh, high frequency and uhf capable Pretty cool box, but uh, I think believe a family built this, and they were selling them. But it's a UHF and VHF. It's got quality equipment in it. Look at the. He got a Yezu radio. He got a YT auto tuners. He got a uh, pretty much everything you need. And so um, the coax cable. We would have finished this, but we were missing some connectors. All right. Goodbye, big boy. We've spent a lot of time in this thing, Abraham and I. We're ready to, we're ready to skedaddle. We cleaned it, plumbed it, prepped it. Oh, we got to start turning the lights off on the way out. And I'll be able to monitor it 
via the interwebs here. And so I'll be able to check on it every day. We start shutting her down. Turn the water off just in case. I'm just a little nervous, even though we've checked everything. It's just nice to uh, know that no water is working. It's easy to turn the water on. We have two master shutoffs, two shutoffs. So now they can start living in it. I'm just going to get our stuff, get down out of here. Should we turn that monitor off? Oh, now you're thinking, no, oh, what if somebody sees it? it looks really cool? All right, I guess I got to turn the monitor off. All right, that's probably enough from Bunker Land. Hope you enjoyed it. Got any questions about one? If you get one put in the ground and you need it powered, please contact me before you put one in the ground. We've learned a lot. Love to share with you how to install the backup power systems, security systems, camera systems. And it's like you always just cannot have enough Ethernet cable pulled, coax cable pulled, power cable pulled. <laughs> so we took every bulkhead to the surface so we'd have backups to backups, but we ended up uh, still, we used every bit of it. So um, before you install one of these, if you're going to take it off grid, now, a lot of people just run an extension cord over and plug in the panel, and that's whatever. That's not the way we uh, we install them. So if you uh, plan on going down this road, just give me a call, and we'll make sure you get heading in the right direction. We have This is the second one we've done. We learned a lot on the first one. Second one was just kind of fine-tuning and learning a lot, too. So, all right, hope you enjoyed it. This is Engineer 775. If you don't mind, I never ask, but if you don't mind subscribing or liking the video, uh, I think that's the first time I've ever asked that. So help me out. We'll talk to you later.